welcome to Crypto Lingo. My name is Diana Suarez, and right now I have a special guest with me, Terry Lin, product manager of Selkie. Welcome, Terry. Thank you. Glad to be here. <laughs> I'm so excited to have you here with us today. So my name is Terry. I work as a product manager at Selkie. You know, what we're trying to do is solve the self-sovereign identity space. Mm -hmm. uh, the example I give is that if you log into Instagram right now, yeah. they have your email account, you use a Facebook account to log in, it's stored in their server somewhere. It has all my information. Exactly. <laughs> and like Spotify has your ID, Uber yeah. has your trips, you know, you have all these IDs separate in the world, uh, but you don't actually own them. And so for a crypto application that's decentralized to work on the network, uh, there's no database to store your ID, yeah. so you need to own it yourself. Uh, Selkie and some other kind of people in this space, what we're trying to solve is how can you actually own this through application that then unlocks all these decentralized applications uh, on the blockchain. So I am my physical owner of everything. That's the high level uh, idea, and like for example, uh, a lot of times, say you do KYC to join token sales, mm -hmm. you just show your passport when you open a bank account. Yeah, of course. You have all these copies of your passport. So the big level thing we're trying to prove is how can you prove you are who you are without showing who you are? So how can you say you're American, yeah. but show somewhere on your ID through a hash on the blockchain that you are American without actually giving your passport number? So as the world gets more digital, only your ID to unlock all these other applications that are decentralized. Okay. So then how did you hear about self key and what made you feel like it was a genuine product? Sure. So for self key we're trying to solve the identity problem mm -hmm. and our founder Edmund has been in the space for probably five years. I first met him in around 2012. Uh, he was doing incorporations, opening bank accounts, uh, overseas bank accounts, things like that, residencies, getting mm -hmm. a second passport. But he's been doing this KYC stuff for a while. And he was com my company secretary uh, for my LLC when I had my own business. Uh, I was working physical products before. And then we just kind of kept in touch. And then uh, I found out he was working on blockchain <laughs> stuff three months ago. And then we just got in touch. He was like, hey, I need a product guy. And then that's kind of stuff. He knows what is needed from a practical level. Yeah. But then now we're trying to figure out implementing this on the blockchain and like tying this new technology. So I know you just said you've been working with the company since last year and you had some crazy, amazing success. Yeah. Most notably, raising $21.8 million in private and public sales, which is amazing. Congratulations. Yeah. And you also sold out within 11 minutes. How was that even possible? I joined the team right as it happened, so I wasn't there architecting that. But mm -hmm. I think um, one is also people just knowing that the problem we're solving is a pretty big problem. Yeah. Uh, when you look at identity and you're really in the crypto space, this is really what unlocks everything else. Uh, application wise uh, and I think the way we're approaching it because Edmund has been in the space for so long that you know working with notaries third party documentation verification things like that he knows how this works offline yeah and he's just pointing online so it's not it's based in reality for a lot of stuff we're trying to do and problems that we're trying to solve what's your favorite product that's the self key uh, for me, it's the wallet that we're going to be releasing in the Q1. Uh, my favorite feature is managing uh, your custom tokens. Yeah. And so on Ethereum, there's Ethereum, that's the main Ether that powers the platform. If you have like 10 coins managing this, these assets, it's very hard. If you're mm -hmm. trying to send it and receive it, sometimes you buy an exchange, sometimes you buy it through a token sale. Yeah. And so our wallet, you can basically store it on the wallet, but our wallet also pulls the latest price from the APIs, the coin market cap. Because mm -hmm. right now, if you store it somewhere, you know you have a thousand coins. Yeah. Every time you want to see the price, you can like load some website, load your app. But our app can just automatically update this. So that basically the wallet just keeps you organized and then you know yeah, what yeah. coin and what how much it's worth and just right. what you have in your yeah. app. Instead of like knowing you have a thousand coins but then opening the website and refreshing it every hour. So that's where we're starting out. And then we're also partnering with exchanges in the marketplace mm -hmm. to help them do KYC. That's where wallet can do two things right now. It's basically build an ID profile. So like you have a copy of your passport, you do a selfie, you get your birthday, all this stuff. You can save it locally in your wallet. Yeah. And then when you apply for like, say, a bank account or an exchange account, you can just like send it. And then That's insane. I need this wallet. Right. I need to like download this LP yeah. app. You guys have an app going on? It's coming out in the Q1. What makes you guys like strive to have such a detailed roadmap? Yeah, one thing I realized is that working in this space, mm -hmm. things move very fast versus yeah. say if you're working in a regular software company. Uh, and I think as this technology develops, uh, you know, we surely want an ambitious roadmap because I think is a big opportunity to solve this identity problem. Yeah. Uh, but it's also that we have to be realistic in the sense that what the market is coming back to us. And I think right now, Q1, we're just focusing on exchanges. The SEC in the US announced that exchanges, if you're an exchange, you have like an exchange, yeah. or say you're not an exchange, because if you're trading people's money, there's certain things you have to do. I think yeah. the SEC government is saying, like, hey, we have these rules that govern all these other financial exchanges, so you have to play by these rules, and you have a chance to go apply right now. Our focus is mainly in Asia, okay. uh, because a lot of Asian banks, uh, kind of like institutions, in the last 20 years, they didn't get to develop what kind of we have here in the West, so they're trying to leapfrog the technology 
into having you know mobile from your desktop and go straight to blockchain. And a lot of this stuff, um, you know, I think they're more willing to because if you look at the population there. Not everyone has a desktop computer, but everyone has a mobile phone. Right? Everyone like has a smartphone. Exactly. It's how do you leapfrog your infrastructure, financial infrastructure, straight to that? That's what we're trying to do. So. so I know there's a lot of competition out there. How does Self Key make itself different from the competition? Sure. I think one is our partnerships. Uh, we partner with a lot of exchanges, decentralized exchanges. Um, we get a lot of business on the calls to okay. help them power their KYC because, like I said, the government's clamping down and they need you to collect. You know, if you register on an exchange, you need to prove who you are. Someone to identify myself. But, so. but, but if you're an exchange, how are you going to collect all this information in an easy way? Especially if you have 100,000 people signing up every month, it becomes a very big burden to hassle. And mm -hmm. How do you save this information? Do you really want everyone's passports sitting on a server somewhere? The idea is how do we figure that out with these exchanges? I think it's kind of the problem we're solving. And I think the use case for Mainstream adoption, probably still a while away, but we're trying to start with certain market segments first and then expand kind of upwards. Okay. So early adopters, exchanges, and then kind of corporate, and then kind of expand from there. You want to just play fair all the time, but exactly. you also need to figure out a new way to work. Right, and especially when it comes to like identity, government stuff, all these jurisdictions have their own ways of doing that, mm -hmm. so it's like, how do you figure that out um, as the world gets more global? Because right now you can send the email to anyone in the world. Exactly, because we're so, just one click away, you can talk to anybody you want to talk right. to. And it's so easy off my smartphone. Right. Even if I don't have a desktop computer, like you said, but off my smartphone, I can do anything. Right, and the problem right now is how do you send the value? How do you send them $10? That's in a different currency that can do it within like, a minute. A minute. <laughs> I mean, you can do that with crypto, but right now, the legacy system of no, it's more like you have to wait for your business days, and you have to do exactly. this, and you have to do that. Even if I ACH you money from Bank of America to your Chase, it takes like two days. Yeah, exactly. It takes about like business days instead right. of you cryptocurrency, you can be like right away. Right, exactly. And I think that's probably like the next evolution of money because you know you have the internet that has information. I can send you information, yeah. but how do I send you value? And it's crazy. I feel like this is going to turn into the future. Like, I hope so too. And it's exciting because you see it. It's like technology, law, mm -hmm. business, finance, history, politics, geography, like all these different things yeah. that are like tangent to this. But you know, like, how do you, how's this going to like, you, know, you look at when Bitcoin was made, it was mm -hmm. 2009, right after the financial crisis. Yeah. So there's, I think, especially the younger generation that grew up from that, maybe they've seen friends lose their homes and things like that. Yeah, so course. I think there's a certain, like, kind of like libertarian view to that, all that stuff. And I think the excitement that you can decentralize everything and because money, like I said, it was like a function of power, right? You have to pay the IRS taxes, mm -hmm. they can take your tax, change the Federal Reserve, put tariffs on countries, they can build planes, they can build missiles, things like that. So when you look at money as a whole like that, and when you take that power away, yeah. it scares a lot of people, yeah, but it also makes a lot of people excited, because then you can be like, hey, free from the government, mm -hmm. all this stuff, but then it depends on your political have to pay your taxes. <laughs> exactly, like, yeah, I think there's like yeah. some guys in Puerto Rico trying to build a crypto heaven, there's like all these different things that are going on. But I think a lot of it, you know, once you go down the rabbit hole, yeah, because a lot of people I talk about cryptocurrency, you know, the light bulb goes off and they're like, yeah, exactly. They go off real quick and they're like, yo, this is the future. You need to pay attention. This is what yeah. people are going to be doing. If you understand that money evolves as a concept, because 10,000 years ago, if I had a cow and you were growing strawberries, I would say, you know, you want a half a cow, I'll trade you. But now, why, why would we do that now? We just use our cards. Right? Exactly. So money has evolved. And best example, like you take $100 bills now, 5,000 years ago, it was worth nothing. Even 300 years ago, the US is not even that old. So it's just a piece of paper. So like money evolves, it's, it's like money is a form of web of trust, yeah. so how does that evolve over time? And I think as the world gets digital, crypto is coming to the solution. I like but that. I like that. Sense. I like that the power is taken, is taken away, but you can still like, it's money and it's currency, you can still right. use it to trade if you wanted to. Right, and who's to tell you what you can or cannot do digitally? Like I can email you something on the internet, but I can't send them like value. This is like kind of what makes it exciting. I think that's why a lot of people are interested in it. Yeah. Give it like five years, and it's gonna be like everyone's gonna know about it and everyone's probably right. gonna have self key on their app and oh, with boy. a wallet. Yeah, exactly. yeah. But I think especially like mobile apps now, you know, like you pay through coins, you have like stickers you can buy, like exactly. it's a very native concept for a lot of the younger generation. And then crypto is probably just a little extent on that. Especially as everyone matures in the next five, ten years, I think you'll start to see a big shift. Your team has been working really hard. Is there anything you can give us, like the crypto lingo community? Sure, so our wallet uh, will be out by the end of Q1. Mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna integrate with exchanges first. And uh, so if you want an easy way to sign through with exchanges without yeah. submitting all these documents, uh, you can just save it on your self-key wallet once, yeah. and just one click apply, and then uh, that's it. So I think uh, this wallet is kind of the first launch, but we're gonna build it out uh, throughout the year, and we'll see Apple products and services. So down the line, you'll be able to open a bank account, uh, incorporate, 
Uh, maybe even a second passport if you're into that. Do you see blockchain going in the future, or will you see yourself key even going in the future? I think blockchain uh, is going to change a lot of things, whether it's voting, finance, settlements. Uh, but I think certainly we need to unlock the identity first to okay. actually access all this. So. Yeah, forget to do the self key, self key.org, and yeah, yeah, that's where you can find it. I'm so happy to meet you, Terry. Thank, Thank you for, for the opportunity. Yep. Bye, guys. Bye, Crypto Lingo.